Hi, welcome to today's workshop on how to draw atoms using the periodic table. Today's workshop will walk you through the process that you'll need in order to do your formal drawing as well as your teach to learn activity with the whiteboards. You will be teaching another student basically the same thing I'm going to teach you here. So today I'm going to use beryllium, which is element number four on the periodic table, as an example. You can also find a picture of this whiteboard when I'm done in your Google Slides. So let's start. First, I'm going to draw beryllium's element block from the periodic table. Beryllium is element number four. The atomic number tells us the number of protons and the number of electrons. The symbol for beryllium is BE. And the atomic mass for beryllium is 9.01. Now for today's activity, it's important that we round up to the nearest whole number for the atomic mass. We're not going to get into the details about why atomic mass have decimals, so today, beryllium's atomic mass will be 9. Okay, so first thing we want to find out is how many protons, neutrons, and electrons beryllium has in its atom before we can draw it. So far, the periodic table has already told us that it has 4 protons and 4 electrons because it's atom number 4 on the periodic table. So now we have to do a little bit of math to figure out how many neutrons are in the nucleus. To solve for protons and neutrons, we use this equation. Protons plus neutrons is equal to our atomic mass. We already know there are four protons. Our unknown, or our variable, if you want to relate this to math, it's the x, is our unknown, and that's equal to our mass which we just said was 9. Remember to round up here because we're not going to have fractions or decimals when drawing atoms. So the equation is 4 plus what equals 9? The answer is 5. So we know that there are 5 neutrons in an atom of beryllium. So now we have the information we need to start drawing our nucleus. For our nucleus, I'm going to draw four positive symbols to represent our four protons. One, two, three, four. And since neutrons are also in the nucleus, I'm going to use the symbol O for no charge for our neutrons in the nucleus. So I'm going to draw five of those. One, two, three, four, five. The last step is to draw the electrons. Now, we know that the Bohr model with electrons and rings is not correct. However, it is the easiest way to draw an atom. But how many rings and how many electrons in each ring is the next part of our discussion. Beryllium's location on the periodic table is how we get that information. So here on the periodic table, we have beryllium. Beryllium is in column or family two. And it's also in period or row two. So this is going to be the next part of our discussion, electron placement. The group or family tells us how many outer electrons there are. So stay with me. Outer electrons are called valence electrons. Since beryllium is in family two, we're going to put two electrons on the outermost ring. That's important information. Now beryllium is in period two, so that tells us that beryllium's atoms have two rings.
So I'm going to add to my atom drawing. I already have my nucleus. I'm now going to draw two rings. One ring, two rings. And I know that the outermost ring needs two outer electrons because it's in family number two. I'm going to use the negative symbol because electrons have a negative charge. So you might be asking, well, what's next? Well, let's look at the total number of electrons that beryllium has to have. Beryllium is atom number four. Four protons, four electrons. And I've already placed two electrons in the outermost ring. Well, that's an easy one. We know that there needs to be two more electrons, and we're going to put those in the innermost ring. So there is my atom of beryllium. Four protons in the nucleus, five neutrons in the nucleus, and four electrons. Two found in the first ring and two found in the outer ring. Two rings because it's in period two. Two outer electrons because it's in family two. For your formal drawing, you'll need to pick an atom anywhere between number five through number 15. Once we get into those higher numbers, it becomes a little more complicated to draw different atoms, especially the larger ones. So remember this process when you're teaching another student how to draw an atom. Your formal drawing can be a good spot to start when choosing an atom to teach with. Hope this was helpful.